In section 3.1, you will solve linear systems by graphing. In our first example, our linear system looks like this, two equations, two unknowns. To graph those two equations or lines, we want to put the equations in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b form. The first one is in that form for us, so we can go ahead and start by graphing our y-intercept of negative 2 and then using the slope of negative 3 or negative 3 over 1 to find more points. So I could go down 3 units and then right 1 unit or I could go up 3 units in the positive direction and to the left 1 unit in the negative direction. And I can keep doing that as many times as I want and then draw my line on the coordinate plane through those points that slants downward from left to right. Okay, in the second equation we need to solve for y, so I'll start by subtracting 5x from both sides and then dividing every term by 2. When I simplify, I have y equals negative 5 halves x minus 1. So I'll first graph that y-intercept of negative 1 and then use the slope of negative 5 over 2, so I'll go down 5 units and to the right 2 units. Or I could go again up 5 units and to the left 2 units in order to graph my line. You can see that they have similar slants or slopes on the coordinate plane because I'm graphing them very close to one another. You'll be able to graph much more accurately uh, with better uh, equipment using the straight edge. It's hard with this um, equipment that I'm using. But it looks like our point of intersection on the graph is negative 2, positive 4. Negative 2, positive 4. And we can prove that to ourselves by checking. Since it is a guess and check method, we do need to check that solution in both equations to make sure it gives us true statements. Okay, let's try this second system and find its point of intersection. So solving for y in that first equation, I'm going to subtract x from both sides and then divide every term by negative 3. Simplifying, I have y equals 1 third x plus 5 thirds and graphing. I'll graph the y-intercept of 5 thirds which is 1 and 2 thirds on the y-axis and then I'll use the slope of up 1 over 3 to find more points, positive 1 over positive 3. Okay, or I could go down 1 and to the left 3. I'll graph this line with a positive slope, a line that slants upward from left to right. Okay, then the second equation solving for y, I'm going to add 2x to both sides and then divide every term by 3 so that my y-intercept is 3 and 1 third and my slope is 2 thirds, so I'll go up 2 and to the right 3 or again down two units and to the left three. And draw my line through those points. Okay, now again, it's a guess and check method, so I'm going to guess that my point of intersection is negative 5, 0 for these two lines. And we'll go ahead and we'll check this solution to show how you check and to prove that it is a solution. So I'll put negative 5 in for x and I'll put 0 in for y. Simplifying on the left, 0 times negative 3 is 0 and 0 plus negative 5 is negative 5 so we get a true statement and now it has to also check in the second equation so I'll put that negative 5 in for x 
and 0 in for y again. Simplifying on the left, I have negative 2 times negative 5, that's 10, and 3 times 0 is 0, so three, 10 plus 0 is 10. I get 10 equals 10, another true statement. So I know that this is a good solution. It's the point of intersection for those two lines, negative 5, 0. Not all systems intersect. When they do, we consider it a consistent and in independent system. Intersecting lines have different slopes, and this system gives us that point of intersection, one solution. But we also have inconsistent systems with no solution because what we're working with are parallel lines, and parallel lines have the same slope and different y-intercepts. A consistent and dependent system has many solutions because we end up with the same line. When we put those equations in slope-intercept form, we see that we have the same slope, the same y-intercept. So sometimes that's all we want to know is how many solutions a system has. If that's the case, I would take both of these equations in this first example and solve for y and compare the slopes and y-intercepts. So solving for y in the first equation, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides and divide every term by 4. So this first equation becomes y equals negative 1 half x plus 3. Okay, and we'll have to do the same thing to the second equation. So solving for y, I'm going to subtract x from both sides and then divide every term by 2. And simplify, I get y equals negative 1 half x plus 3. And you can see that I ended up with the same line, same slopes and same y-intercepts. When I have the same line, on the coordinate plane, I have infinitely many solutions. That is a consistent and dependent system. Okay, let's look at the second example. Let's solve for y in the first equation by subtracting x from both sides and dividing every term by negative 1. Simplifying y equals 1x minus 3. And then the second equation, subtract 2x from both sides and divide every term by negative 2. I get y equals positive x again minus 9 halves. So comparing those slopes and y-intercepts, I see that I have the same slope but different y-intercepts. Because I have the same slope, these lines will have the same slant on the coordinate plane, and they'll be parallel. So I have parallel lines that will not intersect, so there will be no solution. That is an inconsistent system. In this application problem, you plan to work 200 hours next summer mowing lawns and babysitting. You need to make a total of $1,300. Babysitting pays $6 per hour and lawn mowing pays $8 per hour. How many hours should you work at each job? Well, if we assign some variables, let's let x equal hours babysitting. And let's let y equal the hours mowing lawn. And we can write a system of equations. Our two totals are 200 hours and $1,300. So to get 200 hours, we would add x plus y and set it equal to 200 get $1,300, we'd multiply $6 for every hour babysitting and $8 times every hour mowing lawn to get a total of $1,300.
when we add those products together. Okay, now I want to graph these two equations on the coordinate plane and find that point of intersection to solve this system. Um, and to do that, I'm going to use x and y intercepts. I'm going to let x equal 0 and solve for y, and then let y equal 0 and solve for x. So when x is 0, y in this equation is equal to 200. And when y is 0 in this equation, x is also equal to 200. So we'll label our axes and graph this. Actually, it's going to be a line segment and not a line because neither x or y in this problem will be negative. So we're working only in the first quadrant with positive values. Okay, so again, the y-intercept is 200, the x-intercept is 200, and I'll connect those points drawing the segment in the first quadrant. Okay, and now we want x and y-intercepts for the second equation. So again, letting x equal 0, we're left with 8y equals 1300. And when I divide 1300 by 8, I find out that y is equal to 162.5. Now I'll let y equal 0 and solve for x. So we're dividing 1300 this time by 6. And I'm going to get 216.7. We'll use decimal, decimals uh, for uh, graphing purposes. So now the y-intercept is 162.5. So we'll approximate that, and then the x-intercept is 216.7, so we'll also approximate that. And then we'll draw again our line segment, and we'll look for our point of intersection. So I'm guessing that we could use 150. and 50 as our ordered pair. Okay, and we'll just check to make sure that that ordered pair satisfies both equations. When I check it in the first equation, we know that it's true that 150 plus 50 is equal to 200. That's true. Okay, and then checking in the second equation, 6 times 150, which is our x value, or our number of hours babysitting. And y is 50, that's our number of hours mowing lawn. Okay, so simplifying, 6 times 150 is 900, and 8 times 50 is 400. And when you add 900 and 400 together, you do get that 1300 that's on the right hand side. So another true statement and our solution checks. So it says how many hours should you work at each job? 150 hours babysitting and we'd want to work 50 hours then mowing lawn. Include in your notes of this video guided practice problems 1 through 5 odd found on pages 153 and 155 of your textbook.